Good morning, everyone. My name is Sitlali Rios, and I am the program lead for the collaborative platform OSIP here at eCampus Ontario. I have the honor to introduce our next two presenters from Conestoga College Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning, Catherine Brill Brillinger, Director, Teaching and Learning, and Nicole Drake, Manager, Continuing, Continuing Education and Workforce Development. Please write down your questions in the chat. We'll have time in the end to answer those. Thank you, and over to you, Nicole. Thank you very much. And I'm just gonna share my screen and we'll get started. All right, so our presentation today is about using stackable micro-credentials for innovative faculty development. Now, um, as Lally said, I work in the School of Workforce Development, Continuing Education, and Online Learning at Conestoga College. And so my role in this presentation is to provide you with an overview of how micro-credentials uh, function at Conestoga College, since it is a little bit different from institution to institution. And then we're specifically going to drill into looking at the teaching and learning micro-credentials and the stackability of those micro-credentials. Uh, and then Catherine is going to talk about their approach and provide you some examples of the credentials we have, and then we'll wrap up with some lessons learned and question and answers. So please uh, do share your questions and answers with Sitlali. So Conestoga College uh, was an early adopter of micro-credentials. And so uh, we have been working with micro-credentials micro for some time, um, and we are very active in promoting the micro-credentials that we have available. So I'm just going to share this quick video with you, uh, just one of the uh, promotions that we have out there uh, related to our micro-credentials. Change. Sometimes we need it. Sometimes we just want it. Change can seem uncertain yet exciting, and it's time for a change. To change the way we learn and the rules of education. Conestoga College's new micro-credentials are meeting the change. Short, concentrated programs that are gauged to real industry demand. Move ahead in your career with micro-credentials. Register now. Change. All right, so we have over 70 micro-credentials that are currently offered at Conestoga College. 18 of those are through the teaching and learning uh, post-secondary teaching micro-credentials. However, we do have a bit of a coordinated approach. So we have multiple disciplines um, and I'll, I'll talk you through a little bit of how that works. So from departments across the college involved in continuing education, uh, we have a continuing education management committee. So that's the approving body for our new and existing micro-credentials, and it's coordinated through the School of Workforce Development, Continuing Education, and Online Learning. So it's a somewhat centralized approach, but it really puts the power for developing um, the micro-credentials and the subject matter expertise into the hands of the program areas. And then beyond that, the Continuing Education Management Committee, CEMC for short, uh, is supported by all of those cross-functional departments that are required to make this work effectively. So our curriculum department, marketing, um, web services, and others. So it's a flexible process, but it's consistent. So as I said, the idea really starts with our program areas. They identify the need, they know the subject matter experts, they have those relationships with industry, and they develop that opportunity. And then they complete a short form uh, that they bring forward to the CE Management Committee for review. We discuss it. Um, and once it's finalized and approved, which is not a, an onerous process, then we circulate that through to curriculum. We make sure that it gets into our student information system. Um, and we have that sort of detailed process going forward. And one of the key points is at the end, we talk to the other program areas, to career advisors, to our marketing and other promotional supports to make sure people know about the micro-credentials that we've developed. So when it comes to faculty development, which is really the purpose of this presentation, we only started doing this in March of 2021. And so Catherine will take you through um, some of the offerings that we have available and, and the rationale behind that. But 
essentially it was designed to be flexible and having a lot of choice was key for our faculty. So we have one core micro-credential, which is called teaching at Conestoga, that is a required micro-credential for new faculty at the college, um, but that's only four courses. And then we have a wide range of other offerings. So for our employees, for our faculty, and, and also for our administrative and support staff, it's free to take the courses, but they're available to external participants as well. And all of them use our LMS. So although they are short six hour courses, um, they all are one credit. They function in our learning management system the same way all of which for us is eConestoga. Um, it's the same as all of our other courses. So that structure is in place for the learning environment as well. So within the context of our broader continuing education, um, what we really wanted to look at here and what I wanted to demonstrate with this slide was the interest in this. So we launched this in March of 2021. In 2022, um, over 18% of our enrollment was specific to teaching and learning micro credential courses and teaching and learning professional development workshops within all of our continuing education, professional development, corporate training um, registrations. And of that, a fully 10% were specific to these micro-credentials. And you might say that's because we make it required for our faculty to take those courses, but that's not all of it. Almost half of that 10%, so just over 4%, are people enrolling in the other courses in that more well-rounded, um, broader experience. So it's not just the foundation, it's there's a great deal of interest in these courses. And that's only growing with time. So this was year two, um, and we're excited to see where, where teaching and learning takes this next. So from here, I'll hand it over to Catherine, and she will talk you through uh, some of the approach that teaching and learning has taken. Thanks so much, Nicole, and also for your, all your support in the background as we got these set up. So teaching and learning's approach, we wanted to make sure there was one mandatory micro-credential because we knew that uh, micro-credentials would be new to our faculty and we wanted to get them into that lead-in one and we knew that they would take the optional one. So we started off already with, I think, 12 out of the gate. So we prepared everything, launched them with choice. Um, we always email the faculty and share with congratulations at the end and invite them to take more for free. So they've got that follow-up at the end of the, micro, the mandatory micro-credential. It's all online. All of these courses are delivered online, either synchronously or a few of them fully asynchronously, mostly synchronously uh, in a hybrid model, um, except for the instructional skills workshop and some Indigenous uh, learning offerings, which are in person on campus now that the uh, pandemic allows that. Um, we started with enough choice to pull everyone in, and we are adding more um, every semester. So we have three more in the tube to, that are going to be launched in fall for uh, faculty and others at the college, as Nicole mentioned. And we really encourage faculty to take any course they want, but to think about building towards a specific micro-credential and then the certificate that I'm going to tell you about. So that's the three levels of stackability. Next one, please. So um, we have a post-secondary teaching certificate. We set this up as well before we launched the micro-credentials because we wanted to um, start the publicity with the stackability. Um, we chose teaching themes and we are continuing to add teaching themes that are pertinent to faculty in this um, uh, decade of change. And participants can take individual six hour courses and uh, build towards either one. And as Nicole mentioned, one of the uh, micro-credentials is mandatory. All faculty in their part-time hiring letter or their full-time um, um, contract letter are told to complete the four within their first semester of teaching and as soon as possible. Next one, please. So one of our big goals, too, when we were looking at quality was to make sure that we establish a culture of outcome-based education and faculty really understood it and understood alignment. So um, all of the courses both teach new things, but demonstrate that alignment. So they have outcomes, they have a pass-fail assessment at the end, we demonstrate use of the LMS and other technologies for teaching, and by the end of the mandatory one, we have faculty ready to um, continue teaching at Conestoga. Next, please. Uh, here's a testimonial, I'll give you a moment to read from one of our faculty.
And we've had many such great testimonials from faculty who found the flexibility and the learning really put them in good stead for teaching. Next one, please, Nicole. So I'll invite you to have a look on our website later at the post-secondary teaching certificate. There are more than 70 courses listed in a large bucket. Uh, faculty need to finish 29 courses, and that can consist of micro-credentials and or random courses, uh, 85 options now, sorry. And then they do a mandatory capstone because in order to make sure everyone meets the outcomes, we want to pull everything together at the end. And that's the only course that's 12 hours long. It's a little bit longer than the others. This is our most popular micro-credential over the past year, evolving assessment practices, because we're getting people right up to date with what's happening, helping to solve their uh, teaching dilemmas, and again, ensuring that alignment. Next, please. And we've had great feedback from that one. And although this is mandatory for new hires, we often have experienced faculty taking this as well. Um, they can take it for free and get this micro-credential as well. And many have said, ah, oh, uh, now I'm finally getting exactly what's going on here. So the evolving assessment practices, for good reason, was very popular. But one thing that we really wanted to focus on, and we did this from the beginning, was we wanted to include equity, diversity, and inclusion themes within our micro-credentials. So we have five specifically themes that I want to tell you about. The first one is called Awareness of Indigenous Values, Identity, and Spirit. It's offered by uh, two knowledge holders uh, who share, and they share in the way that seems most appropriate to them. So we send them in advance, um, all attendees in advance, notice that this will be delivered in a very different way, and invite them to join that learning. Piece of feedback, the thing I learned was not just the teaching I came for, but was to slow down and listen deeply. The teaching methods of oral sharing and sharing stories of experience required this action by me, and I felt as though it was the key to success in this course. We've gotten amazing and very heartfelt feedback from individuals taking this particular micro-credential. We have another one which is called Inclusive Teaching Practices for Post-Secondary Courses. This one is also um, very challenging sometimes for individuals to take and for the uh, facilitators to deliver. Um, so for the Indigenous one, we have two facilitators for that reason. For these ones, we have one person, but I'm aware that sometimes the conversations can be very challenging. And so you can see the courses on the side. Each one is six hours. Each one has a pass-fail assignment, which is usually uh, reflective in nature. Although for some, we do have um, also a multiple choice uh, check of core knowledge. Next, please. Then we have the intercultural teaching skills for post-secondary courses. I believe in the first year, this was the second most popular one as our international student numbers uh, blossomed and we had many more new immigrant students coming to the college. Many faculty wanted to uh, build their skill set and their understanding in this area. And all of the courses are taught by individuals who have a background in the field, as well as their faculty developers. They're mostly on my team or um, experts that we bring in. Next one, please. And then teaching post-secondary courses in L2 professor. I teach this one myself. My background originally was an ESL teacher with a expertise in uh, English as a global language or an international language, pronunciation and variety. So we have many, many professors in the post-secondary system in Ontario for whom English is a second language. The Canadian education system is a second system that they're navigating. Um, so I have a lot of fun in this one. And then um, some of my colleagues, two individuals actually teach this teaching college courses in Canada one, uh, where we're looking more at um, the system of education and what might be surprising and trying to build skills as well. And I have to tell you, although both of these two were originally aimed at um, people who were new to the educational system in Canada, um, we do have a lot of individuals born and raised here who are asking to take uh, these courses or some of them. So a great deal of interest in the two micro-credentials. And I'm going to pass it over to Nicole to share some lessons learned. So thank you. Thanks so much, Catherine. And we know we're throwing a lot of information at you in this short session. Don't worry, you have access to these slides and we will share our contact information with you as well in case you have questions. We really want to make sure there's time for question and answer. Um, but we promise to share our lessons learned. And so these are some key takeaways that we have found um, 
within the broader context of micro-credentials, sort of from my perspective as someone who was in a coordinating role, um, and then seeing what Catherine and her team have been able to do, what we've learned is that the coordinated but flexible approach really works. We have some micro-credentials at Conestoga College that are 100 hours, right? And uh, Catherine's courses are typically about 20 to 24 hours. Um, and so there's a lot of variability there, but the coordinated approach provides that support and that infrastructure across the institution so that teaching and learning could have this great idea about how we could develop this program. They planned it from the outset, but then they had that support through a structure that was capable of actioning it in the college environment. Um, and so that kind of network was really important to success up front for us to have that in place. The second one is that staff are really invested in the courses and they have adequate support as well. So this comes in two places. One, Catherine's staff and her team are really invested in developing the courses, courses that draw on their own expertise, as she has mentioned with the ones that she teaches, and courses that draw on the expertise of her team um, and are responsive to the things that they're learning as primarily teaching and learning consultants um, who are hearing what faculty need and who are responding um, through the training that they're providing. So that kind of investment really, uh, as someone who has taken some of the classes, you see it in the instructional environment. You see um, the, the care and, and planning that goes into these courses. But the second piece is that the faculty are now invested. Faculty who have taken the first four courses um, because they had to in some ways, um, but now are hooked and realize how much um, this can bring to their teaching uh, practice. And so they have the support of administrators and of the institution to be furthering their own development in this way. Third one is that the quality had to be great. So if we were going to launch this, it had to work and it had to work well, um, had to have practical value and be effective. Essentially those first four ones as a hook, as I've said, into additional development and finding um, the ability to take just one course, if it's an area that you think, oh, I really would like to learn more about academic integrity or indigenous learning. Um, but once you've taken those courses, you want to take more. Um, and so that's, that's because of quality. And one of the things that Catherine didn't mention is after every single course, um, we, we survey. So they get feedback on a continuous basis uh, for every single course from every single participant to be able to uh, respond and improve and adapt um, as needed. And then the last one is having those structures in place to both incentivize and standardize. So standardize in learning our in using our LMS is a big piece of that. Um, and then giving the structure of the classroom. So they are all approximately the same length. Um, they all use our LMS and have typically a hybrid environment uh, in which students are, are able to learn. Um, and then from an incentivizing standpoint, it's not just mandatory, but students actually do receive a payment for their training and for the time that they spend in these courses. And so um, that is you know, paid training for our faculty in this environment. So that's really been important for us as a lesson learned as well, um, that, that that is a way to you know, ensure that there's value placed on the learning in this classroom. So as I said, you do have access to these slides. This is our con uh, contact information and you're welcome to reach out to us uh, for additional feedback and to access these links to look at our post-secondary teaching uh, certificate program as a whole. Um, but here, I'm going to stop my share, and we're going to move into a q and A. I I just want to add, before we do that, I forgot to add a slide in saying that we've worked closely with eCampus Ontario, and we have actually transfer credits for the um, EXTEND program. So you can get a micro-credential, you can get um, credits towards the post-secondary teaching certificate by taking the free EXTEND courses. So uh, you can see that on our website, and that's one of our great partnerships for the micro-credentials that was there from the beginning. Thank you very much, Nicole and Catherine. Uh, this was very, very interesting. Uh, actually, you answer one of the questions, but I will read it anyway, so we have some context. Um, it is, what crossover, if any, might there be with a campus Ontario's 
on uh, extend program. So you just mentioned it, you have transfer credits and that's so good that we are partnered with you. We have a second question that you also answered, but can we have the answer in audio, please? I will have a question. For micro-credentials with courses that focus on soft skills, for example, communication skills for internationally trained educators, how does the assessment look like for these courses? Yeah, thank you. So because I teach some of those, they at the end, I provide a set of questions and the rubric for what I'm going to look at. And I ask them to record a video on Zoom talking to me as if they were responding. And then I analyze that and give them back. And it's worked really well to give feedback. And I found those courses, people take the first one and continue on learning more about. Uh, um, and, and I'm very, very sensitive to the fact that I'm not trying to change anyone's pronunciation to sound like me. So the feedback is on effect comprehensibility, etc. So I think they're very well thought out and it is important that they get that everyone gets feedback on their um, production. Thank you. We have one more. Can you comment on what the hybrid model looks like? Yes, for sure. So the courses are six hours and the micro credentials are usually 24 because they're a combination or a package. And so the six hour course is generally um, two to three hours on Zoom, which are recorded. And if someone can't make the Zoom session, then they can watch that afterwards. And two to three hours of asynchronous activities and the, the assessment. Um, so it depends on the content. For mine about pronunciation, it's mostly um, on Zoom, back, back and forth. Um, but somebody else's who is more... Um, um, thinking through ideas and how you're going to teach, they may just be, have a one one hour session and five hours asynchronous. So it really depends on the content and what seems to work best. And we've adjusted that over the semesters as we see faculty saying, I want more on Zoom or um, I want to read more about this content. And if I could just add to that, I think also the fact that we're using the LMS as one of our uh, structural supports means that all of that functionality is there. So there's a lot of discussion board work. There's a lot of asynchronous content that people can access and respond to. Um, and there's ways to upload all, all types of um, materials. So like Catherine said, sometimes assessments will be audio or visual in nature. Um, and that that's all possible because we're structured in that uh, Econostoga environment. And we have tons of H5P features uh, that we've added in as ways for people to practice the material as well. Thank you, Nicole. Now that you mentioned the LMS, LMS, sorry, I have a question here asking what LMS are you using? If you can share that. So we use uh, D2L for ours, and it's Econostoga platform is, is in D2L. Thank you. I have one more question here. Thoughts about using indigenous languages in some issued badges, part of the concrete feature set, so no extra costs? Um, so we did have a conversation. We're actually launching a second Indigenous um, micro-credential. So it's just gone before CEMC and um, hopefully will be approved for fall. We talked about adding um, language in, but we haven't um, yet because the Indigenous knowledge holders think there's such a gap in the information that faculty currently have in general that they wanted to pursue more conversation. So that's definitely something perhaps for the future as they continue to see what faculty are responding to. Thank you. We have a comment from our CEO, Robert Luke. This is such an important avenue for developing our teaching talent. It's a really excellent and direct way to ensure that all faculty are able to be content experts and expert teachers. Bravo. Can you talk a bit more about the structures you mentioned to incentivize participation? Yes, yeah, so the part-time faculty, if they're part-time partial load, I don't know if you're the union system in the Ontario colleges, are paid $40 an hour to take the first mandatory courses. So if they do six hours, that's times $40. They have to still pass the course, right, um, uh, in order to get that. So that's a huge incentivization. So for 20 hours times 40, we're recognizing their time and their investment. And it was a, um, a lead-in to them. Oh, wow, this is awesome. I'm going to take more courses. So we honor the part-time faculty's time in that way. Full-time would be taking it within their uh, weekly hours. Um, then they have the micro-credential, which is uh, for the mandatory one copied to their chair. Right. So that's always nice that your manager finds out that you are participating and complete. Uh, and then um, they get the micro credential badges and they get the certificate at the end and they build a community of practice at the same time. So I think that really incentivizes the and we have a huge um, 
team site with 400 plus faculty, they join often after taking one of these where they can continue conversations through their career at Conestoga. Thank you. We have one uh, audience member asking if all the SMEs for these micro-credentials staff are within the teaching and learning department. Uh, good question. So uh, I do have a team of teaching and learning consultants. So if you Google Faculty Learning Hub Conestoga, you can see their profiles. But sometimes we don't have the exact expertise, for example, for Indigenous learning or for degree quality. So for some of them or for academic offenses, that's another area of the college. So from that um, department, we borrow a person. But most of them are someone internal from Conestoga, except the Indigenous knowledge holders. Um, we've contacted them. Thank you. Uh, have you categorized your courses through traditional faculty attachment or have you also connected these offerings to skills topics? We're right now on a project of um, going through faculty competencies and more recent research on that because we do want to tag each course to one of those competencies, but we're not done that yet, but we do think that's really important work. We have so many questions. I don't think we will have the time to answer them all. Uh, sorry if I am missing one of yours, but uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your capstone project? Oh, the capstone project. Yes, absolutely. So it's 12 hours and the faculty, it starts with a reflection the opposite of what normally occurs, where they reflect on what they've learned in the 29 courses and try and um, find some themes. And so the facilitator of that would um, help them to think about what they've learned, what gaps they still have. Then they go through some content. It's a little bit personalized to each of the faculty. So we offer it regularly throughout the year. There's usually 10 to 12 in the capstone. And then their final project is actually an applied one on an assessment or on a lesson plan, pulling everything they've learned together and, um, and then doing call outs, demonstrating how they think that that has occurred. So, uh, and we've adjusted it again each time, as Nicole said, there's a survey and we're really trying to find out what will be meaningful for faculty and ensure the outcomes are met. I have one regarding uh, sharing. So congr congratulations on flexible, inclusive and relevant PD offerings for faculty at Conestoga. Do you find that faculty are incentivized to post on LinkedIn, does this help to encourage others to join the courses? We really want them to do that. And I think we need to do more to encourage it. I think we're changing cred systems or something, Nicole, like uh, to make it more um, agile because we really want them to be able to flip that uh, micro-credential anywhere and everywhere. And, and some of them have taken 10 of them. So how does it look when you package that together and put it on LinkedIn or elsewhere? We're, we're trying to figure out the technology behind it um, and then also maybe prompting them a little bit more. But we definitely want them to get it out there on their resumes everywhere. Thank you. There has been a lot of variation this morning in terms of the relative duration of micro-credentials. At Conestoga, they seem to vary significantly. Do yours follow a similar format example, chunked into modules of similar length, even if one might be 24 hours, but another 100, or is there flexibility? So I'll take that one. There is a lot of flexibility. So again, to that coordinated yet flexible approach, there's a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of whether courses are full courses that are themselves potentially part of a larger credential. Um, and those, you know, two or three courses have been clustered together as a course skill versus uh, much shorter courses. So there's there's quite a bit of variability and we're, we're a little bit deliberate in that to allow for flexibility. I think this all this is all the time we have, unfortunately. Any closing remarks you, you might want to give to our audience today? Just thank you for the opportunity to present and uh, thank you to Catherine. Um, and please reach out if you have any questions uh, and you'd like to follow up. Yeah, happy to hear from everyone and grateful for the opportunity to share. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, and please stay tuned for our next session. Bye-bye.